Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host, author Denise M. Walker. I am the founder of Hope in Christ Ministries and I'm of Hope Writing and Publishing Services. Let's open up with a word of prayer and then we'll begin today's show. Father, we thank you again for this time. Father, we praise your name. We magnify you for you alone are worthy to be praised, O God. We pray, Father God, today, Lord God, that all across the world, many will continue to hear your word, O God. Hear your word from Psalms 91, O God, and that they would know that the secret place, the protection, everything that they need is in you. Father, I pray for the needs being met all over the world. I pray, Father, for healing and deliverance taking place all over this world. Father, I thank you for you and only you can do it as they place their trust in you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Again, welcome to today's show. We are continuing in Psalm 91, breaking apart Psalm 91. Um, Psalm 91 is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures God gave to me many years ago um, when I first um, received Christ um, as my personal Savior. And um, this uh, Psalm, even now, um, continues to bless me. So we're going to get started. And we're starting from um, 91, 5 through 7. Psalm 91, 5 through 7. Um, just a little uh, background information. Um, we have been talking about how God um, is our protection, our shelter um, from many things in our lives. But we have to take refuge. We have to go. Um, we have to do something and and it's not just you know passive um we have to go and take shelter from the danger of the world and of sin and everything um because he knows um what's best so psalm 91 uses um kind of metaphorically um describing god um as you know um the protector the bird that um we go under the shadow of his wings and um we are protected in that sense um and there are many 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 things that god protects us from um and we um understood in the previous verses that we studied um that he protects us from the snare of the fowler and um from the perilous pestilence as um the new king james a version says um, that's protecting us from the traps of the enemy um, the those um, things that the enemy does to pursue us to trap us to deceive us and lure us into um, sin and, and things like that and then the perilous the, the wickedness the iniquity that's all around us um, all those different things and then we get to um, verse 4 just the back background information um he shall cover you with his feathers so we get into we got into discussing what the feathers um symbolize um insulation um um, reducing heat and um and so he keeps the temperature and then the wings um is adapted um to the environment or the life of the bird and so um the wing is 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 um underneath the feathers and so that's where you really um gather in god and and so um and then it talked about you know his truth his truth being the shield his truth being a shield because that's the only thing we can lot rely on um god's truth god's truth um his reality the reality of him um and the honesty the sureness that he is the reliability that we can stand on um that he alone is god he has never um ceased he will never cease many people have tried to you know they in the days we live in they they, they try to um denounce the bible they try to come against the word but god said that um heaven and earth will pass away heaven and earth will pass away but my word 
will stand. I will stand. I when everything, when the dust settles, it will be me, the true and living God. And so that leads us into Psalm ninety one five through seven. And I'm gonna read it in its entirety and then we will get into breaking it apart once again. So verse five says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I'm going to read that once again. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday in the afternoon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you again we are talking about more of the benefits of taking refuge in God because this psalm continues on and on with why we need to take refuge why it's important that we come into relationship draw near to God and so five through seven goes into um, the terror that 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 is by night, um, the terror, the 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 dread, um, the sudden alarm, um, and then the arrows that fly by day. So, in 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 the gist, in the visual format, we see that um, God is used the, through the Holy Spirit. God is revealing that you know terror by night it it could be they could be referencing demonic um activity um they could be referencing you know um satan using other people to come against you um and and in the night season when you're sleeping so saying you don't have to be afraid even when you are sleeping you can rest knowing that god is who he says he is that he as you have taken refuge that you are protected you're covered because he's more powerful than any demon and anything that satan can try to do against you and then it goes into um the pestilence the pestilence is um considered plague and disease um something that can destroy you or take your life or take you away um, and it says, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. So it's it's saying here, pestilence can't walk. We know literally, physically, pestilence is plague, disease. It can't walk. But what it's saying is it could be, again, referencing demonic activity. The enemy trying to destroy you through sickness. Um, the enemy trying to destroy you through um, the um, the terror, the being afraid and um and then um, of of being killed or destroyed and um so that's the pestilence part again pestilence can't physically walk but it could be referencing the enemy seeking to destroy you through sickness um and then the other portion of that um verse six says nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday um lays waste to devastate you at noon and so at different times of the day of the every hour in other words here God can be trusted to protect us God can be trusted to protect us and then when we get into verse 7 a thousand a thousand it says a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand so it's not it's it's figuratively speaking that if you can visualize in a in a war that um, maybe there's a thousand people have you know of the enemy enemy's camp that have fallen and then ten thousand on the other side of you 
you can still be standing because you're standing in God. You're standing in in the um in his protection. He's our refuge and our fortress. Remember we talked about that previously. So we're standing in the protection of God. And so all this could be happening around you, but you still stand because he is who he says he is. Amen. And so um those verses pretty much get you to visualize you know war could be breaking out all around you that's what i picture when i read them um war could be breaking around break, breaking out around us and we can still be standing because we trust in the lord we're standing in jesus we're standing in the power of god because he alone can save us he alone can protect us um and deliver us from all of the evil that's around us that surrounds us in the earth today um wherever we are and you know another picture that's coming to my mind is um let's say you know you're you're going into a, um i've heard stories where people go into um parking garages and there may be someone this enemy that may be using somebody let's say you get off work late and you go into a parking garage to get in your car and the enemy has someone lurking um to try to rob you or harm you you can be safe you can trust that god's angels are around you protecting you um from danger seen and unseen i've I've heard um stories of believers where people you know walk up to them they came to rob them but the angels begin to reveal themselves and, and and they tremble at the sight of god's holy angels so imagine 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 that um we all um know that god is our protector and so that's just another visual you know um working in schools thank you lord um you know we we see so much happening now um but i just believe and i pray for god to release his warring angels in the corridors of our schools to protect us in every way and we don't walk in fear and um fear of being harmed fear of somebody coming into the school building and harming us or harming the children god we we pray for god's warring angels to be released in every quarter and every corner of our schools and um and and our movie theaters and just different places all around our homes to release your angels of war and so that's what i visualize when i'm reading verses five through seven that we as believers can call upon god and he will answer us um the enemy is not greater than god and so a lot of times i know i say this a lot on my podcast or in my devotionals but a lot of people seem to have this thought that you know when they say satan and god it's almost like they're saying that they're on a level playing field and that's not so god is god alone and he's all powerful the word declares um that you know in in the old testament in the beginning it didn't say in the beginning satan created the heavens and the earth it's in the beginning god created satan is a created being that disobeyed god and got what he got because of disobedience and so and that he will get the final judgment and so we we have to visualize that and not be fearful of the enemy not be fearful because the power of god lives on the inside of us and so that's what psalm 91 helps us to understand let's look at a couple of the scriptures that are the cross reference for those scriptures in psalm 91 that are very very powerful um a couple of them that really stood out to me is psalm 27 and it was verse 1 through 3 and it and it's a psalm of um king david and it says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear and that question there is rhetorical he's saying if god is the light in my is my light and my salvation i don't need to be afraid of anybody who is it that that i'm supposed to be afraid of that's what king david is saying here and then he goes on to say the lord is my strength the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid so he says whom shall i fear if god is my light and my salvation and whom shall i be afraid of if he is the strength of my life he strengthens me and so 
King David is telling us we don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid. That's why it's a cross reference to Psalm 91. And then in verse 2 it says, When the wicked came against me, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. So they came they came they came he said when they came when the wicked now let's let's stop at that word right there because sometimes we see wicked as people and just other people sometimes and, and and not saying anything about you know people close to us but sometimes the enemy can use people close to us and they could be operating wickedly and king david is saying they they came against me they came to eat up my flesh. Now, eating up my flesh here, I just visualize, of course, it's not literal. The people are not coming to take his arm and chew his arm off. Um, it's figuratively speaking, to eat up my flesh, to destroy me, to, um, you know, that I, that I would die. And it says, my enemies and my foes. My enemies and my foes. So he's specific here. And they stumbled and fell. Why? Because of God's protection. Because of God's protection on his life. And then in verse 3 he says, Though an army may encamp against me. So not just one, not two, but a whole army. Though they may come up against me, they may come and try to war and attack me. My heart shall not fear. Why should my heart not fear? Now the world's heart may faint and fear fear and, and, and faint but our hearts shouldn't fear because of the power of God that protects our lives the war may rise against me in this I will be confident in this I will be confident it's rising up against me but I can trust that God is going to deliver me that's his confidence because remember the back in um we go back again and it says God's truth will be our shield his truth shall not will shall be your shield so he said I can be confident because God can be relied upon because God is stable he's faithful he's sure because he's God that he can protect me so I can be I can be confident that if the whole army come against me all I need is God to protect me and so that's Psalm um, 27 1 through 3 of King David and then we move down um, to um, Psalm 46 and 2 where it says therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed we will not fear even though the earth be removed. So, I mean, just I, some of the the language is so descriptive. So descriptive here. And though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, we are not to fear. Because God said again in scripture, there's another scripture that says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, when it does settles, in other words, God shall be the victor. He can be trusted. His truth is our shield. And so that's um, telling us not to fear. We don't have to fear of all this stuff that verse 5 through 7 tells us in 91. Thousands of people, um, you know, the war breaking out. And many may fall on our sides and and, and many of um, the pestilence that walks in dar- darkness and the destruction that lays waste for us. This word declares that God's truth. He is all powerful and God can protect us. And so we move into Job. So that's a few from Psalms. And we move into Job 5 and 20. And it says, Job said, in famine he shall redeem you from death. And in war from the power of the sword. And so Job gets very specific um, in, in explaining what that particularly means. In famine 
and fam I'm famished, I'm hungry, there's no food. And famine he shall redeem you from death. You you might be you might go hungry a little bit, but he'll provide food for you. And then war from the power of the sword. He can protect you. All right, and then Job um, goes on in, in, in 5 and 21. He says, You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue, and you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. You shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes, because God is with you. As he was with Job, so shall he be with each and every one of us, because he's the same God. And then Job goes on in 5 and 22 and he says, You shall laugh at destruction and famine, and you shall not be afraid of the beasts of the earth. So even the animals, we God gave us dominion over them. God protects us. If, if God didn't give us dominion and protection over the animals, we would be in trouble. We would be in serious, serious trouble. So think about that. Think about that. that lions and tigers. You know, and the different animals, you know, but God, God, that's a miracle in itself. But God keeps us, keeps us. He gave us dominion. Um, And then a few more here. We go down to Matthew 8 and 26. But he said to them, why are you fearful? This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So that was the the scripture paraphrasing that they were on a boat and they Jesus was asleep, cause he's God, he's God, he's God. He was asleep and everybody else panicking, and he woke up and said, "Why are you fearful? I'm here. Well, I don't know why y'all scared. I'm here, and if I'm here, you don't have to be afraid. I made the wind." So he told the wind to hush. He rebuked the wind and the sea. Hush, stop. Because I'm the one that created you. And the calm came. And so that's what we can see in our lives. We have to get to that place of trusting God. That that word right there. Trusting God. You, me, all of us. All across the world that are listening do we really trust that God is all powerful and that if we get into and we take refuge um, and we know that he is our refuge and our fortress and our God the word Psalm 91 says my God in him will I trust I can trust him because he is God and so that um, that scripture is uh, it's very powerful in itself and then Hebrews 13 and 6 I wanted to give you a variety here of cross reference scriptures um, so we may boldly say the Lord is my helper I will not fear what can man do to me man was created by God so no matter how many demons legions of demons may have overtaken their lives they are not more powerful than the Holy One of Israel, the God of all creation. He can shut those demons down. Jesus walked past demons and said, hush, come out. Close your mouth and come out. The same power he has placed on the inside of us, the power of the Holy Spirit and in his love, his, his covering, his protection, his angels surround us and we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear. All right. And so we, you know, just summarize and then I'll give you a couple other scriptures. We summarize knowing that when we have fellowship, when we're walking in fellowship, as I, as I looked at some of the commentary, um, Spurgeon um, was, oh gosh, he's so amazing. Um, he's an old theologian, but his words are powerful. Um, and, and some of the things that Spurgeon said um just to paraphrase was um when we have fellowship with god when we have fellowship with god dwelling um with god keeps us from all fear so when we dwell with god fear dissipate perfect love casts out fear 
So when we're dwelling in the secret place with God and we're loving God with all of our heart, we we walk in relationship. That fear, it can't, so because darkness cannot enter into the light of God. And so the darkness dissipates. Even when we walk into a room and turn the light on, darkness goes away. That's a symbol. That's a uh, revelation for us to understand. That's who God is. The light of Jesus destroys so many, I mean, just all things that are impure. And so we don't have to be afraid. Um, he also um, said, the one who trusts in God will be safe. And God's peace is constant protection. God's peace is constant um, protection for us is a con is um, constant and it is protection for us um, and so those are some of the things that you know we have to keep in mind when we are um, when we were in the world yes we partied I, I think about myself when I was in the world yes I party hardy hardy um, club and, and you know just all the things I thought that I was supposed to be doing and and then I came to a place. I came to a place that I said, there has to be something greater, someone greater than me. There has to be more than this, you know, trying to get into the club and, you know, doing all kind of promiscuous stuff. And, you know, I you just I just got to the place where I, I there has to be greater. And then then God gave me Psalm ninety one after I, I received Christ and um come into the secret place of the most high he that dwelleth he that dwelleth it, 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 I go back to that I constantly and you're going to hear me continue to reference to that because it said he that dwelleth in the secret place that means that I had to go there I had to get there he didn't just come God is a gentleman he, he, he gives us free will I didn't he didn't just come snatch me and, and, and my will was to stay in the world no, he wooed me because he's God. He loves me with every fire. It, 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 he loves me more than I can even imagine. Because he's God and he created me. So he wooed me, kind of like when I met my husband. But he didn't force me to come. He showed me the benefits of coming and dwelling in the secret place. So when you come and you dwell... You're not a nomad. You don't keep pitching your tent like Abraham did. You keep going from one place to another. He said, come dwell in the sea. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Stay. Dwell means to stay. And so when we get and we stay in God protection, it could be all kind of people that we could think our, our friends could be speaking all kind of evil against us. And we can pray, God, have mercy, cover them, forgive them for what they say. Um, save them, deliver them, because we know that their word curses can't harm us. Because we're dwelling in the secret. We are in God. God is more powerful than anybody's word curses. Than the enemy using someone. And so we pray mercy. We pray for God's grace upon their lives. Um, and I just, you know, I just think about all of that. When You know, when I was in the world, I knew it was more. I knew I knew there was more. So when we get in the fellowship and we get in walking in relationship with God, we can trust that He can protect us. And I know some may be saying, "Hey, you know, well, a lot of people we know might have, you know walk with God and they got sick and they got ill because it does talk about pestilence and um and it talks about um you know the different things like that in Psalm ninety one." But even still, even in, in the fallen world and some of the things we may not ever understand, God is sovereign. But even the word says that even if they lose the battle on this side, the word declares that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I heard someone say yesterday, I was listening to something I can't remember, but I heard someone say, this the eternal world the spiritual world 
is more real than what we see in, in in front of us and so we don't live to live on this earth forever we don't we got and put us here for that to be here forever yes we're going to go through trials and tribulations but even in that we can trust god we just i, I keep saying we go back to god's character did God create each and every one of us in the love? You can see the loving way God created the earth, the beauty of, of his holiness in the earth. You can see the colors. You can see the animals. You can see the beauty of the birds and, and, the, and the different trees and all the different things that God created. And then you see us that he made in his image, the free will um, to go and come unto him just as we are, to come to know who he is did he do all of that because he was he hates us or god um um as people might you know blaspheme and say you know god is evil or whatever or he's a dictator do you really think do we really think that and i know um you know this is a little side bar from psalm 91 but do we really believe that god is a dictator because we look at dictators on the earth dictators control to the point if you look at some of the countries the people they have to be all in the same color they have to move at the same time they have to laugh at the same time they can't have any individuality if god was a true dictator god is all powerful he's more powerful than those leaders of those countries if god truly was a dictator you wouldn't have a choice to be an atheist you wouldn't have a choice to be an agnostic. You would not have a choice because you would be controlled to serve him because we're created by him. Think about that. So when we go into that and we go into I've hurt so much, hurt so much, God is saying, I love you with an everlasting love. And if you would just simply come into the the fortress of protection which is I I am that I am he healed in scripture and he can heal today and even if he doesn't he's still God he's still God we have to see God's character and I'm going to end with a couple other scriptures Psalm 112 and 7 says, He will not fear evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And the Lord here is capitalized in all caps. That means the existing one, the true and living God, Yahweh. Um, he will not fear evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in, in the Lord. So we know evil is uh, around us. We know we live in a fallen world. We know evil is everywhere present, very present around us. But we trust in the Lord. And our heart can remain steadfast. Our heart can remain steadfast. And the last one is Exodus 23 and 25. And it says, But you shall serve the Lord, your God. And he will bless your bread and water. And then it goes into I. I will and I will remove sickness from your midst as you serve so the word tells us that yes God is our healer and if he doesn't heal us on this side he can hit we, we, the word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and that's so amazing to even think of and so the word declares that he will bless our bread and water and remove sickness from us we have to trust him we have to trust him if we knew everything about God then we would be he wouldn't be God he wouldn't be God he would be one of us but we, want, we know one thing by what we see all around us by what we read in Psalm 91 we know this one thing that God is love he wants to love us, protect us, and keep us in his perfect peace. 